Uh, I'm Robert Masolele, and uh, I'm from Wagner University. So, so that. Yeah, so I'm happy today to, to share with you on uh, this work of mapping cocoa farm across pantropical regions uh, using high resolution cellular imagery and uh, uh, deep learning. Yeah, so cocoa farming is one of the uh, crucial industry, is a crucial cash crop across the pantropical regions. And uh, many farmers depend on this crop. It's a kind of a source of income. Uh, not only farmers, but also countries. It's uh, contributing to greater deal to the GDP of uh, most countries uh, where this crop is uh, growing. And as you can see here in this uh, uh, good map, so this crop is mostly uh, being growing along the pantropical regions, so countries along these regions. And uh, a lot of uh, crops, so most, a majority of production occur along these two countries. So basically Ivory Coast and Ghana are the top producers, uh, which are in Africa basically. And they also have uh, Indonesia, which come like the third, and then come back like countries like uh, Africa again, like Nigeria, Cameroon. Uh, uh, and also, if you go to uh, South America, so you have like Ecuador, Peru, and Colombia. However, there is a challenge there. So it's a, it's a good crop, it's contributing to the economy. However, the uh, farmers are not benefiting a lot. And, like, uh, and the problem is like countries are having challenges of how to create good uh, policies to be able to support the farmers. And uh, there is a lot of benefit, but not at a production site, so not at a production level. There is a lot of uh, a benefit at a consumer site. So companies and the middlemen who are doing uh, business uh, for this crop, they are the ones who are benefiting uh, from this crop. And uh, currently, we, we, uh, we have maps uh, which show location where these uh, crops is growing. However, we have shapefile of countries. So when you, you see, you search for information, you see, okay, cocoa is grown. Probably this is from Brazil, this is from Ivory Coast. But that information doesn't help for policies or even at the consumer side, even for the government themselves to create policies which will benefit the farmers. So for example, if there is a problem, I know there is a, a disease, there is a drought, uh, it's really challenging to track where is it this happening. So, as I said, more than 72% of the cocoa farm are coming from uh, Africa, and 16% uh, are uh, Latin America, and 12% uh, in Oceania. You can see now the disparity that uh, most, most of this production is occurring along the pantropics, but then the consumption, most of it is occurring in other regions. So now you can see, like, for example, in North America, in Europe, and uh, in Asia. So there is a kind of uh, disparity there. And if you see at most of the regulations which are, are being imposed, most they are top down. So, for example, now we have these UDR or other regulations which are trying to put uh, a bit of restriction. And most of them, you see, uh, there will be a lot of effort to, uh, to the farmers who are producing, as opposed to consumers, because consumers are not aware of what is going. So, for example, you might have your eating your chocolate, uh, buying at a very high price, but probably the price uh, from the production site was very low and the life of the farmer is continually being poor. But then you don't know where this chocolate is coming from. You just know where it's coming from, like, uh, okay, Brazil, or it's coming from a coast. But if you know specifically that it's coming from these uh, legions, and you are able to zoom to those legions, you know the condition of those legions, you can get also information uh, about the condition of the landscape, then you can be able to probably uh, raise awareness and uh, take action of what is happening there. 
Uh, the good thing is uh, the production of this uh, crop is increasing. So, uh, for example, from this data, you can see there's a kind of increasing trend. Uh, however, the question is this growth of uh, production, where, how does it occur and where does it occur? Is it because of good su sustainable farming practice or is it because of the changes which are taking place? And if it is the changes, where are these changes taking place? So is it uh, maybe conversion of uh, in, uh, existing farmlands, for example, pasture or food crops are being converted to cocoa because cocoa maybe is behaving better or is it conversion from forests? So if it's from food crops, then you can see the different biosystem impact, meaning that uh, farmers will not be having food crops. Uh, that would be ha having an effect on you know, the nutrition which farmers are getting in those areas. Uh, but if it's uh, on forest conversion, then you have an environmental impact, which, of course, these all are factors uh, necessary for we as a sensing scientists and geoscientists. It's important to be able to show this information using uh, uh, remote sensing and the knowledge we have. Similarly, not only for cocoa, we have other crops, so you can see, of course, rubber, uh, coffee, oil palm. These all are all kind of parts of commodities which are in the UDR. There are also the trends uh, showing that the export, um, I mean, production of it is increasing uh, over the years. So, as I said, the current maps we have they are basically ex, uh, shape files, so you can't get detailed map of the location of cocoa, so probably the global location of cocoa. And the one we have uh, uh, mainly from few countries. So you can see if you search in Google or the literature, as you can see, we have a lot of information, a lot of studies which have been done, like for example, in Cote d'Ivoire, mostly in West Africa, not the whole, mainly these two top producing countries, uh, Ghana and uh, Cote d'Ivoire. And recently we also have a paper where I tried to map on uh, cocoa, like all commodities which are causing deforestation. And of course, this is based on, on areas where there was deforestation and we saw substantial increase uh, of these uh, cocoa farms causing deforestation and not only for Ghana and uh, Cote d'Ivoire, but also for other parts of West Africa and Central Africa. So the idea here was to upscale it to global scale, basically not only focusing on Africa, but doing the whole for the entire pantropics. However, the challenge is uh, cocoa is not like a uh, crop which grows uh, as a monocrop, so you have different typologies of cocoa farming systems. So you have a monocrop, but you also can also find uh, cocoa, cocoa planted along uh, lows of trees or a mix with other crops. For example, mostly you can find uh, uh, banana uh, plantation also planted together with uh, uh, cocoa with trees. And you can also different, uh, have different densities of trees, uh, agroforestry systems. So that's kind of challenging. However, we, we have a solution. Uh, but before the solution, there is another simple one probably which uh, people always suggest, probably to split this into multiple classes and you classify them in the independently. But that has a challenge, unless you're only having classifying specific area where you have cocoa and you want to separate them. But if you just do some kind of classification, it means you are, we have some areas where there's also a mix of cocoa with maybe coffee, uh, also like trees with coffee. So there are different type of process systems. So for we, we are using, uh, so an, uh, we have an existing model which is able to identify cocoa, but what we are adding here is to make the model location aware. Uh, we are adding, uh, meaning that we have to calculate some embedding based on location, but also the frequency domain, and we are also implementing active learning. So we have an active le learning procedure of which uh, we have the active le um, learner and uh, model, and that model we have inputs, uh, uh, three different inputs with Sentinel-2, Sentinel-1, and uh, location embedding, and together with the attitude data 
But on top of that, of course, for Sentinel-2, we're also calculating uh, the f uh, frequencies, so using the low-pass filter and the high-pass filter of the Fourier transform. So those are basically the input and the output, of course, you have these probabilities, uh, confidence level, and, the, uh, and then from there we predict where cocoa is present. And using active learning framework, of course, we kind of using probability low and entropy high. We are trying to estimate areas where we can improve the performance our, of our model. Uh, so just to explain a bit of, uh, uh, so for the frequency domain, basically normally you have uh, a uh, time domain where you have like a time domain, you have a, as a wave mostly done in sound conversion to frequency domain. However, here now we have a pixel, which is kind of like spatial domain. And uh, so we, instead of using continual, use uh, this quick Fourier of transform to, to transform it to uh, uh, amplitude information of course, maintaining the phase. So specific, for example, here you can see if you have these crops where you have lines planted, you can really have this uh, spectral power uh, reflectance and uh, kind of the frequency in single direction. And if you have, uh, uh, like for example, a forest, you can have uh, in uh, multiple directions and uh, you can derive some kind of density based on the line uh, of uh, polarization of, of, of the frequency domain, and you can use this also to do to as an input to the model, and that can really help to improve. And for this case, for example, here, if you see you have a different uh, cropping system for cocoa, and you can see that you can have very uh, different power spectra from the frequency domain. So we are now doing the prediction. Uh, and the validation assessment for the whole of the pantropics, just to share you some few results. So this is uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, picture. Uh, it's really interesting because I really love these patches, like of forest. They are really beautiful, uh, kind of piece of art. But they are kind of you can see the the complexity of uh, uh, of this uh, uh, piece of uh, image. Uh, so you can see a lot of roads there. Uh, you can see small villages, and uh, you can see cocoa farms. You can see other small uh, f agriculture farms, and you can really see that this forest. Uh, how at least you can look at the edges of this forest. You know, it's uh, showing that if you see like these roads going through, you know, and uh, these uh, kind of degradation and you have a lot of cocoa from around, meaning that the risk there is really high. And probably if you try to estimate so how many years they will still be here. So, that's, so this work shows the importance of having uh, the most testing data and this product and how they can really help decision makers and even people plan for the future on what to do. Because it will be so sad if you come after five or ten years and these patches are gone. Uh, so, uh, this is another example here. We have, uh, this is uh, part of Colombia, uh, I think in the uh, northern part. You can see this is a plantation uh, for a cocoa farm, and uh, uh, this is kind of a big one. I think it's a more commercial, probably, company. Uh, and uh, also here, it's part of, uh, uh, you can see there's a, a cocoa farm monocrop but also there is uh, an agroforestry farm. And together with this, we're also producing probabilities, meaning that uh, where we have more confidence and low confidence, although here it doesn't mean that uh, if you have a low confidence, uh, it's not a cocoa farm. It just means that the model is struggling to make a decision there. So it might be a, a cocoa farm, uh, although probably especially the agroforestry systems. Uh, and uh, also, here another one, this is uh, like in Salavena, probably people from Colombia know this place. Uh, you have a lot of make a lot of cocoa, it's one area which you mostly have a lot of co cocoa farm, and a uh, mix of also pasture, but you're able really to predict this area with a very good accuracy. So, uh, I would like to go, for example, also to Ecuador, here Ecuador and Peru, where you also have a lot of cocoa, 
you can see uh, Ecuador, there are like a lot of new cocoa farms, which you also uh, were able to detect there. And also uh, in Peru, where you have also a mix of uh, a lot of small scale uh, cocoa in terms of agroforestry, but also monoculture from which are kind of like new uh, forms of, uh, uh, because in Peru, I think most of, of the cocoa, the agroforestry, but then now you also have some new uh, cocoa, which are, uh, early plantation based. So to just conclude, uh, to our knowledge, of course, this uh, uh, will be the, the first global cocoa map. Uh, and uh, we hope it will help and have the potential to increase the sustainability for farmers and help government to really implement policies which will be help to the farmers. And uh, we also represent all the typo typologies, and the, our hope is that we can be able at least to also uh, differentiate this uh, uh, in your product. So where you have cocoa, which are um, monocrop, and the cocoa, which uh, agroforest. And this, I think, will be so useful for people to take on and try to analyze this data. So at the end, thank you, and uh, uh, Sante Sana, and I welcome your questions.